Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Van Heflin in Forward the Nation on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we tell you one of the great stories of this country. We tell you of a time, not so many years ago, when there were still frontiers to be reached and conquered, and when those frontiers were of rock and ice and sand. We tell you of a time when the adventurers were hearing the challenge of a dream, the dream of a united America stretching from ocean to ocean. Two young men whose names were Lewis and Clark accepted this challenge. And it is of them that we tell tonight, basing our story on the novel by Donald Kalross Petey called Forward the Nation, a title that fitly symbolizes the American dream of those days and the dream which should still be ours for tomorrow. To star in Forward the Nation tonight, we are happy to have with us again that fine actor and always a good friend of Hallmark Playhouse, Van Heflin. And now here is Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you're looking for a way to say something to someone you care for, look for a Hallmark card and you'll find the card you want to send. Because Hallmark cards are designed to say what you want to say, just the way you want to say it, with the good taste you demand of anything that bears your personal signature. That's why Hallmark on the back of a greeting card has come to mean you cared enough to send the very best. And now here's the first act of Donald Colross Petey's Forward the Nation. Starring Van Heflin. There's a large map on the wall of the White House, and the President of the United States, President Thomas Jefferson, is pointing to it tracing the course of the Mississippi north from New Orleans, unfolding a dream to the young man beside him. A young man with firm chin and resolute eye. A young man named Lewis. Captain Merriweather Lewis. From New Orleans to Lake Superior, from the Mississippi to the Rocky Mountains, an area of one million square miles, enough to double the size of the United States. That's what we want. That's what we must have, Captain. The entire Louisiana Territory. If the French will sell it, sir. The reports from France, though, aren't very encouraging. Uh, they will sell. Napoleon needs the money for his wars. Meanwhile, Captain, you must, I must be ready to act. And uh, now let's get on with your report. Oh, yes, sir. Well, I've prepared this list of the equipment that we'll need and an estimate of the cost. And Now, this, uh, this is a sketch of the probable route of the expedition. North, along the Mississippi to the Missouri thence to the headwaters of that river, wherever they may be found, thence westward to the Rocky Mountains, wherever they may be located, and finally, by means of some mountain passage, on to the Pacific Ocean. Will it be possible, Captain? For 20 years, I've dreamed and argued for such an exploration, and now I wonder, is it really possible? It will be done, sir. I promise that. I have confidence in the men who will accompany me. Well, then you've already selected them? Well, the majority, sir. And uh, now, on that point, I, I would like your permission to share the command of the expedition with a man that I've known for a long time, sir. He's a great soldier, and he's my best friend. And his name? Captain William Clark, sir. And so my quiet, comfortable life as part of the White House family came to an end. President Jefferson's prediction proved true. 
On April 30th, 1803, France deeded the Louisiana Territory to the United States. And shortly after, Will Clark and I set out for Louisiana, for Louisville, Kentucky, the mustering point of the expedition. There on the banks of the Ohio, we oversaw the building of the great iron flatboat, which was to transport the men and the equipment. Yes, and such strange equipment it was. Barrels of gunpowder, cases of barter goods for the Redskins, astronomical instruments. They all make sense, Meriwether, but what in blazes this box full of lead medals for? <laughs> Every one of them with Jefferson's face on it. Yes, well, I had to make up to give to the Redskins. Yeah, you uh, figure to decorate them for lifting our scalps? <laughs> No, Will, we're going to tell the Indians that they're no longer subjects of the French, that they have a great white father in Washington. Uh, the medals will show him what he looks like. Hmm. Captain Lewis, Captain Clark. Yes, what is it, boy? My name's George Shannon. If it pleases you, I've come to enlist in the expedition. Well, son, I'm afraid that you're, <laughs> you're a little too young. I'm 19, sir. Well, <laughs> well we're taking mostly Army men with us. Uh, Indian fighters. Woodsmen, army scouts, we've got hundreds of men of experience to choose from. Yes, sir. I see. Oh, uh, George, is that your dog? Oh, I reckon he followed me onto the boat. Down, Purvis. Down, Purvis. Oh, wait, wait a minute, son. <laughs> Just a minute. What, uh, what is his name? E. Purvis Unum, sir. That means one out of many. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you come to pick that name, son? Oh, he was a scrawny pup in a big litter, sir. I chose him out of many. Just like I was hoping you'd choose me, one out of many. Oh, uh, I see. Uh -huh. Come on, Purvis. Let's go home. And uh, on your way, George, you tell Sergeant Willis to give you the oath and sign you on. Yes, sir, Captain. Well, the young rascal turned out to be a runaway schoolboy of 16, and his dog's name was really Rex. But with it all, George Shannon was the type that we needed. He was clever, resourceful, and eager. The following spring, our riverboat reached the new American town of St. Louis. And there, one fine day in May, 30 officers and men waved farewell to civilization. Pushed out into the Mississippi and then swung westward up the mysterious Missouri. We pushed upstream past the Osage River, the Platte, the Niobrara, the Cheyenne. For five and a half months, it was north-northwest. By late October, we were nearly to the great bend of the Missouri, not far from the Canadian border. And then one afternoon, while I was writing in my log... Captain, Captain Lewis, we just sighted an Indian village up ahead. We've reached the territory, the Mandan tribe. When Captain Clark and I went ashore, we were met by a white man, a French-Canadian, who called himself René. And when we told him the purpose of our mission, he shook his head sadly. Oh, c'est impossible, monsieur. Even the Indians know not the source of the river Missouri. And when you speak of the Rocky Mountains, you talk of a legend. No, it don't exist. Uh, perhaps not, but we've got to find that out for ourselves. Ah, oh, but that is madness. Above this point, the river is like a terrible demon. The rapids will dash your boat to pieces. Well, we'll have to take our chances on that. If necessary, we'll march overland. Oh, oh, will you, monsieur? Without guides, you will soon be lost. All right, then we'll hire guides. Ah, pardon, monsieur, but no. Far to the west is the land of the Shoshones. And from the land of the Shoshones, no one returns. You will find no one fool enough to guide you. Well, then we'll do as best we can. Hey, wh what's that noise about? Huh? Oh, the Indians. They mourn because a young squaw is sick. Ah, these savages, how they fear death. What's the matter with the score? Who knows? It does not matter. Will, you go back to the boat and bring my medicine kit, will you? Mm. Right away. But, Capitaine, she's only an Indian. Also, my friend, she's a human being. Will and I had very little trouble locating the sick woman. Outside of one of the tents, a dozen Indians squatted in a semicircle, moaning and wailing to the beat of the medicine man's tom-tom. We ducked between the tent flaps and almost tripped over a sleeping baby. Then in the semi-darkness, we made out a huddled figure. Oh. Oh. Feel her hands. She's burning up with fever. Yes. Oh. 
Well, let's see if she can swallow this. Mm. Well, hold her head up, will you? Uh, uh. Oh, no. No, it's medicine. Listen, she speaks English. Yes, that's good. Now, listen, you. White man's medicine will make you well. You drink. I go home. I go to my people. No, no, no. You can't get up. You're, you're too sick. I go back to my people. I do not stay here. Well, looks like we're going to need help with her. Maybe we can find her husband. Husband got it. Husband not care about Sakajawi. Uh, what did I do? All of a sudden, she's scared of me. She's pointing at your hair. That's it. The Indians haven't seen red hair before. She probably thinks that you're a god. Oh, all right. Yeah, give me that cup, huh? Sakajawiya. Drink. Oh, that's good. I go home with Papus to my people. Where are your people? In the hills of the setting sun. Mountains of the Shoshone. Clark and I glanced at each other, a Shoshone. She could take us to her people and they'd meet us in peace. She could lead the expedition to the mountains that we'd come so far to find. And beyond them, perhaps, to the Columbia and the Pacific Ocean. But now she was unconscious. Breathing grew slower and more labored. Now we've done all we can. She's got to live. She's got to. Yes. Yes, she's going to be all right. Everything's going to be. Somehow I believe that we were sent to this Indian girl for a special purpose. And now I'm sure, as sure as I've never been before, that nothing can stop us. Clark, we're going forward. All the way to the Pacific. Just a moment, we will return to the second act of Forward the Nation, starring Van Heflin. There's a day coming soon that no one will want to forget. Not mother, nor sister, nor brother. And, of course, Dad won't forget it because we won't let him forget. It's his very own day, Father's Day, and June 15th is the date. Of course, most fathers like to pretend that they are not worth a special day, but we know better. And all you need is to catch Father when he's looking over his gifts and cards... And you know he appreciates being shown how much he means to each one of us. Do you find it hard to discover the right words to tell Dad what is in your heart? Then let Hallmark Father's Day cards help you. In the fine stores where you regularly buy Hallmark cards, you'll find a Hallmark Father's Day card that says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. There are cards for each one of us to send, wife, daughter, son. There are even cards to send to a father who happens to be your favorite uncle. And, of course, cards for a father who is a granddaddy, too. Any Hallmark card you choose will be one you will be proud to sign with your name. And that Hallmark on the back will tell father that you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton in the second act of Forward the Nation, starring Van Heflin. <laughs> President Jefferson, the Lewis and Clark expedition set forth into the western wilderness to explore the newly acquired Louisiana Territory and to discover a route to the far Pacific. In that region, which is now the state of North Dakota, the expedition passed its second winter. During those long, dreary months of snow and ice, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark became fast friends of the young Indian mother and her baby. Sakachawia quickly recovered from her illness. She told us that we'd saved her life and that now her life was ours. 
She would be our guide into the West, and she would teach us the language of her people. White man, Tababoni. 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 Sai. Tababoni Sai. White man, good. She told us of her girlhood and of the raiding party of Minataris who had stolen her away and sold her into a marriage which she hated. Now her one desire was to again see the land of her own Shoshones. Captain, come take a look at the river. The ice is breaking up. At last. Look, tell Captain Clark to come here at once. We're moving on, lad. On to the west. Thirty men, one woman, and one baby crowded in the iron flat boat and the half a dozen canoes. By now, the Missouri fought us every foot of the way. The great ungainly iron boat had to be pulled upstream and then finally dragged by a tow line past to the men on the river bank. One afternoon, Clark and I went out to scout ahead of the expedition. We scrambled up onto a bluff and gazed southwest. Captain, look. Yes. So they're not a legend. The Rocky Mountains exist, and they belong to the United States. <laughs> towered above the distant haze. Green, brown, white, and forbidding. As the weeks dragged by, I worried more and more about those mountains. And then there came a more pressing problem, the Great Falls of Missouri. Sir, the Indian girl says there are three big falls and a lot of rapids. We'll never get beyond them. Yes, we will. We'll go around them. Canoes and every pound of equipment had to be portaged around the falls, and then that monster, the iron boat, which we'd all grown to hate. For two heart-breaking weeks, we pushed and dragged it over the stony hills, and in the end, it was for nothing. We had to abandon it and build more canoes, and then a few days later, even the canoes were useless. We'd followed the mighty Missouri and its tributaries to the very end, to a gurgling brook in a rocky mountain pasture. That night, we sat around our campfires. Sagajawia crooned a lullaby to her baby. Our thoughts turned to the challenge ahead of us. Lewis. Yes, yes, Will. I don't mean to be discouraging, but how high do you think these Rocky Mountains are? Oh, well, high enough. Maybe too high. That's what I'm thinking. Before we climb over them, the snow will catch us, and we're done for. I know it. We can't do it on foot. And we've got to find horses. Horses to carry our equipment. Horses to carry us before we all go lame. But how? The Shoshones have got every horse in these mountains. <coughs> That's the girl. She's pointing at something. Suck it, Jamia. Signal fire. Signal fire on my people. The next morning, I detailed the men who were to accompany me on a scouting party. We had to find the Shoshones. We had to get some of their horses. We found an Indian trail and followed it. On the third day out, we came to a clearing in the wood, and suddenly we heard it behind us. Shannon, don't move. What? Why? Take the blanket off of your pack and spread it out there on the ground. Captain, quick. That's the Indian sign that we come in peace. Sir, they're behind every tree. They're coming for us. We walked slowly ahead of them until we came to their camp. Indian squaws ran out to meet us. We threw down our guns and gestured that we had presents to give them. And then the crowd parted and a tall, handsome Shoshone walked toward us. I am Kamiya White, chief of Shoshone. You come in peace? Yes, in peace. We bring presents. We bring you your... your woman home to her people. She will tell you we are your friends. Mm. Shoshone squaw? Yes. I don't think he believes you, Captain. Shoshone woman is with the rest of our party. Where? Three days to the east. We... we take you to her. No. They think it's a trap. We gotta get help, Captain. You want me to make a break for it? No, them? no. They'll tell everyone then. Wait, I have an idea. Chief Camille Wyatt. 
Uh, you come with us. You talk to other chief of party. He will give you money presents. Uh, his, his hair is red. It is the color of the setting sun. Uh, hair like setting sun? Me a white want to see. The story of Clark's red hair spread through the camp. The next morning, Chief Kamea Wyatt and his braves set out with us to find this unbelievable white man. Every move was important now. The slightest mistake would cost the lives of every man in the expedition. Finally, we came in sight of Clark's camp. White men and Indians stared across the meadow at each other. And then a slender figure in deerskin ran toward us. <laughs> She ran straight toward Kamea Wyatt and threw herself in his arms. Elder brother! Sakajoya, younger sister. We stood there, Indians and explorers together, touched and awed by the reunion of brother and sister. Once we had saved the life of this weeping Indian girl, and now, through her, the lives of 30 men were spared. You bring me the sister I mourn is dead. Now we are brothers. I give back your guns. I give you all you ask. The horses were ours, all that we needed. But first, there must be a feast in our honor. Well, after the speech-making and the dancing and the singing, Clark and I went to say goodbye to Sakajawia. No. Sakajawia go with you. Then she come back to her brother. She take you to river. River that is full of salmon and goes to great water beside setting sun. With the Indian girl at the head of the caravan, we rode through the mountain passes, climbing ever higher and higher, until finally we were in the region of eternal snow and fog. The icy winds numbed us, the blizzards blinded us, but we pushed on until at last green valleys stretched below us. On the banks of the Snake River, we built canoes and flashed downstream to the waters of the Columbia. Finally, our frail craft met the first tidewater of the Pacific Ocean. On November the 15th, 1805, President Thomas Jefferson's expedition stood on the shores of the rolling Pacific. Will Clark and I knelt and gave thanks to God for his goodness. Besides us, Sagajawia crooned to the baby in her arms. And George Shannon, the runaway schoolboy, patted the head of his dog, and he tried to hold back his tears. Captain Lewis? Yes, Shannon. It don't seem real. But it is the Pacific Ocean, isn't it? <laughs> yes, son. Yes, it is. I, I've never seen an ocean before. It's the greatest moment of my life. I want to yell and, and dance and do something to show how I feel. Well, Shannon, you can. Do you see that tall pine up there on the bluff? Yes, sir. All right. Now, President Jefferson entrusted me with this flag of the United States with the instructions that... One day, it should fly high above the waves of the Pacific. Let me do it, Captain. Let me tie it to the top limb of the tree. <laughs> All right. There you are. Come on, Rex. Come on, boy. Lewis? Yes, Will. It's been worth it, hasn't it? 4,000 miles of river and desert and mountains. 18 months of sweating and <laughs> that much again still between us and home. Today, I wouldn't trade places with any man alive. And when we get home... Well, well, in a way, we are home. This sand, this soil, those hills, and the forests will be part of the United States. It'll be home for our children, our grandchildren. We've shown the way, and now others will follow across the thousands of miles that we've come. There'll be farms. There'll be homes and cities. Nothing stopped us, Will, and nothing can stop America. That has been our past, and that must be our future.
Heflin and James Hilton will return in a moment. As the curtain falls on our show tonight, our house lights will be dimmed until next September, when Hallmark Playhouse will return to the air on Sunday nights over these same stations. But in many television cities, you will be able to see the Hallmark Hall of Fame every Sunday throughout the summer. Consult your paper for time and station. The makers of Hallmark cards and the fine stores that feature them hope you have enjoyed these radio adaptations of outstanding stories as much as all of us have enjoyed these weekly visits into your home. Thank you for tuning us in. We hope your summer is a happy and restful one and hope on those occasions when you want to send your thoughts across the miles, across the years, or even across the way. You'll remember Hallmark Cards. Here again is James Hilton. Van, your stirring performance made a grand close to another Hallmark Playhouse season. Thank you. Well, I'm glad I was invited, Jimmy. It's always a pleasure to be here. You and your Hallmark Playhouse always give everyone a friendly time. Well, that's part of our tradition, you know, and the continuing tradition of Hallmark Cards. Say, by the way, I heard Frank Goss say that next season the Hallmark Playhouse will be heard on Sundays. Yes, like the Hallmark television program. But that, of course, goes on all summer. Right, Frank? That's right, Mr. Hilton. In most of the television cities, you can see the Hallmark Hall of Fame with Sarah Churchill on Sunday evening. Well, I've seen it, and I enjoyed it. It's a good show, too. Well, I hope you folks all have a very nice vacation. And thank you again for being with us tonight, Van. And now, since Hallmark Playhouse is going off the air till September, I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking our audiences for their warm appreciation and the help they've given us by so many letters and good wishes. Speaking for all of us Hallmark players, I can truly say what a happy show it has been and how much we're indebted to our orchestra, our writers, our sound men and technicians, all of them such fine and friendly workers. Thanks also to Bill Gay, who produces and directs our show, to David Rose, who composes and conducts our music, and to Leonard St. Clair, who adapted the script tonight. So until we meet again, this is James Hilton saying good night, and may the summertime be happy for us all. Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Van Heflin may currently be seen co-starring with Helen Hayes in the Leo McCary production, My Son John. The Indian Girl Tonight was played by Mary Lansing and the Indian Chief by Ted DeCorsia. Lamont Johnson as William Clark, Eddie Firestone played George Shannon, Frank Martin played President Jefferson, and Ben Wright was Renee. Every Sunday afternoon on television, Hallmark Cards presents Sarah Churchill, who brings you the story of interesting people on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is Frank Goss, saying goodnight to you all for the summer holidays and inviting you to listen again next September on Sunday nights to the Hallmark Playhouse. Stay tuned for this pavilion, which will be heard over most of these stations. This is the CBS. Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.